Chapter 68, Wonder Weapon. Summoning America by D. R. Doritos, M.D. February 25, 1640. Helheim Islands. Plumes of dark smoke belched from an otherwise dormant volcano, darkening the skies above. An ominous, foreboding atmosphere surrounded the mysterious island chain as arcane energies manifested within concrete facilities. Arcs of lightning flashed overhead, drawn toward a pair of silver rods sticking out from the volcano's peak. Built into the side of the volcano, a Gra Valkan research facility conducted secret experiments using magic gems. Amidst a labyrinth of hallways and rooms, one viewing platform stood out. Placed under the lightning rods, it allowed for a view of the rocky exterior and the lands beyond, as well as a view of the volcano's smoldering internals. Tracking the results of the current experiment, a team of scientists operated recording devices while a tall, lab-coated Aryan watched. Armed with striking features and a keen intellect, he represented the head of the Gra Valka's empire's magical research operations. Having completed his work on their atomic bomb, he was reassigned to the Helheim Islands to work on a new wonder weapon, the lightning gun. Standing by his side, a robed mage from the Magikarite community stared at the immense show of power with an open mouth. By the heavens, Lord Braun, you certainly didn't jest when you claimed to possess greater understanding of the philosophies than the Muons. The lead scientist ignored the compliment, his priorities set elsewhere. So, was this demonstration sufficient in convincing you? It certainly was, Lord Braun. I hope you'll be satisfied to know that I shall return to the Magikarite community with stellar recommendations, provided you share some of this research and all the prerequisite material necessary to understand it. Lord Braun suppressed a frown. Although he and his superiors wanted Magikarite knowledge on magic technology, they didn't want to exchange too much sensitive Grav Alkan technology for it. Braun nodded in reluctance. The Magikarite proposal wasn't ideal, but it was acceptable. Very well. Please send my regards to the High Council and the Dean. The robed mage left without another word, leaving only the crackling of electricity and the monotonous hum of machinery to fill in the silence. Satisfied with the deal they struck, Braun returned his attention to the ongoing experiment. Reflecting on the project itself, he looked at a document placed on the table before him, Project Njolna. The lightning gun was a new wonder weapon designed to fire a directed bolt of lightning at a target. Once deemed impossible, new discoveries in the field of magic, particularly the ability to control fundamental properties, allowed for the development of this new wonder weapon. Using magic to create an electromagnetic tunnel, lightning bolts could be directed at targets much like how a gun barrel directs a bullet. The practical applications of the weapon itself were questionable, with the primary use as a possible counter to American electronic equipment. Despite a shaky incentive for building this weapon, the project nonetheless represented a scientific foundation for the study of magic. Even if the lightning gun proved to be ineffective, the lessons learned from channeling magic and manipulating the environment using magic could usher in a new age of technological advancement. February 27th. Arveist, Magikarite Community. The Magikarite capital city, much like those of other Elysian nations, was a consolidation of the government's wealth and power. Blending the practical functionality of Muan cities and the beautiful aesthetics of Mauritian cities, Arveist was the pinnacle of combined magic and scientific technologies. They coveted knowledge, so much so that their form of government was a council consisting of intellectuals, professors who each managed a state. Together, this council made decisions for the entire community, such as the decision to ally with the Gra Valkans and share their knowledge. Having finalized the deal for Gra Valkan research, the council convened once more to discuss the contents of the enormous data package they received. Boxes of textbooks and reports corresponding to Project Njolna stacked to the ceiling while council members debated the ramifications of continued friendship with the Gra Valkans. Concerned over deteriorating relations with Mu, a portion of the council protested against exclusivity. We already have what we asked for. There is no further reason to pursue closer bonds with these strangers. A blue-suited woman asserted her position. No further reason, you say? A man in a red suit asked with a posh accent. Dr. Halbert, reality shows quite the opposite. These technologies are but a fraction of the wonders in their libraries. Why stop here when we can secure more? Dr. Newman, Halbert sighed, I implore you to see reason. 
this greed can only be satisfied with a heavy price, she said widely. Should we entertain your fantasies, we will be giving up most of our secrets. Not only that, we will be forfeiting opportunities with the Muans, Mauritials, and potentially even the Americans. Heads turned, mouths remaining still. The council members looked at each other, digesting Halbert's worries. It was no secret that the Elysian Defense Initiative and the Graf Valka's empire were beginning to exhibit distinct rivalry. Both sides had already begun to carve up nations and drag them into their own spheres of influence, with the Graf Valkans taking over Lifa, her subsidiaries, and the Konshal Islands. In response, the Muans began consolidating their allied factions and the Mauritials finally exerted the power of their reputation. Even the Americans weren't shy of such imperialism, despite their democratic ways. After the Parpaldian American War, they essentially brought the entire third civilized region into their fold. While everyone agreed that gaining the favor of the Graf Valkan Empire over the Muans and Mauritials was preferable, not everyone thought it was a good idea to sacrifice a relationship with the Americans. Recognizing this, Newman fired back before his argument lost support. Exchanging our secrets for secrets of the Graf Valkan's own is a profitable exchange, considering their level of technology. Doing so will elevate our own understanding of both magic and science, freeing us from our reliance on Muan and Mauritial scraps. He boldly declared. He relished in the quality of his words, confident that he could dissuade any worries about losing Muan and Mauritial goods. However, the elephant in the room still remained as an ever-present, looming shadow. Newman continued, with regards to the Americans, we can anticipate how they will react by studying their standard foreign policy. Analyses of American relations with Kwartoin, Quila, and the Philadelphian nations show a disposition for economic friendliness, including establishing infrastructure. They've shown no inclination toward sharing their technologies, even prohibiting the export of textbooks. Halbert stopped Newman from talking further, hold on, that's an assumption that completely ignores diplomatic deals. This prohibition, it only applies to civilian travelers. We've heard of Muan and Mauritian officials finding access to American libraries and textbooks. Ask yourself, why would Mu and the Holy Mauritian Empire engage in close trade with the Americans? Bar, Newman scoffed. What you speak of is mere hearsay. You have no conclusive evidence for such dealings. You only need to ask the oracles. Their operatives have seen sites that corroborate my claims. A fascinating stall tactic, Dr. Halbert, Newman shot. Before he could tear down the credibility of Halbert's claim, the dean himself stepped in. Halbert's claims do indeed find truth with the Oracle's findings overseas. However, we may not assume that the Americans would be so kind as to simply grant us their best technologies. They will likely ask for something in return, much like they've done with the Mauritials. Dr. Halbert, what can we offer them, and what can we expect in return? Dr. Halbert cooled down, brushing strands of brown hair from her face before answering, Sir Dean, I believe that we can offer the Americans the same materials we have traded the Gra Valkans. They too are interested in studying magic, as evidenced by their activities with their neighbors and the Mauritials. While competing with Mauritial technology is an arduous task, we still maintain one advantage, we know best how to integrate magic with science. If they haven't yet established the basic principles, we may guide them in exchange for technologies. If they prefer us to favor them over the Graf Alcans, then we may take a calculated risk on diplomacy, we may request for even more concessions. If they want the Magikarite community support, they will have to provide us with technologies more advanced than whatever we are receiving from the Graf Alcans. The council members emitted a series of nods, excited over the prospect of receiving American technology. Like the laws of gravity, it was obvious that the Americans possessed greater scientific understanding than both the Muans and Gra Valkans. If the Magikarite could secure a mutually beneficial relationship with the Americans, then they wouldn't need the Gra Valkans' help. Newman's eyes twitched at the thought of losing their relationship with the Gra Valkans, and by extension, his lucrative and very profitable projects. Desperately grasping at straws, he eventually found one that could salvage his position, or at least delay the inevitable until he milked as much as he could from the Graf Alcans. This prospect, Dr. Halbert, is an enticing one indeed. I find myself inclined to agree with you on this, but there still lingers a valid concern. Halbert raised an eyebrow, crossing her arms. 
And what would that be? Our relationship with the Gra Valkans is already established. We cannot abandon what we have for misguided optimism. What if the Americans do not accept our proposals? We are then left with neither Gra Valkan nor American technologies. Ormwan technologies, or Mauritian technologies. Halbert was left speechless, unable to construct a counter for Newman's concern. Already, she noticed more and more council members beginning to agree with his concerns. With nothing to say, she simply nodded and sat down in her seat. Newman looked at the dean, a white-haired man dressed in a gold suit. Sir Dean? The dean concluded the debate. I have come to a settlement. Both sides make excellent points, and should any of you find my proposal inadequate, you may submit a new proposal of your own. He raised a finger. Now, what I propose is a compromise between Halbert's view and Newman's view. We cannot disregard the potential of acquiring American knowledge, but we also cannot disregard the tangible boons granted by our current engagements with the Gra Valkans. We require more information before making a decision, so I propose we maintain current relations with the Gra Valkans while also growing closer with the Americans. We shall implement this strategy immediately, to be ceased and revisited only if either side presents us with an ultimatum. Any other proposals? Everyone shook their heads. Very well. We shall now vote on this proposal. Dr. Halbert in favor? Halbert stood up from her seat, proudly saying her position. Aye. The dean recorded the vote on a sheet of paper. Dr. Newman in favor? Newman didn't prefer the conditions of the proposal, but recognized it as a win. It was better than nothing. Reluctantly, he submitted his vote. Aye. The dean continued the voting process with the ten other council members. It seems we have a unanimous consensus. This is now official, the Magikarite community will seek to maintain current relations with the Gra Valkan Empire. While doing so, we will foster relations with the Americans until we are issued an ultimatum, or reach a final decision. Council members, we will convene every month to review our positions. At any time, you may confirm or rescind your vote. Once there are 12 confirmed votes, we will proceed with the elected plan. If there is a tie, we will once more review the votes, in case anyone wishes to change theirs. If there still remains a tie, then I shall mediate and decide. The dean then used a gavel, signaling the conclusion of their meeting. This convention is now adjourned. You are all dismissed.